Right, so I've recently decided that I need to get better at focusing, and so, obviously, a pair of noise-canceling headphones is the way to guarantee this. And so, in this video, we're gonna be testing these top six noise-canceling headphones to figure out which of these is the best on the market and which of these I am going to buy for myself. Now, the cool thing is we actually have a whole range of these in different price points. We have the ridiculously cheap Anchor sound cores. We have the Microsoft Surface Headphone 2. We have the Sony WHXM 1000 M4, something like that. We have the Bose QC700s. We have the Apple AirPods Max, and we have the stupidly expensive B and O Bio Play H95s. And so for each of these, what we did is that I tested them extensively myself and we got a few team members to test them all as well. And we're gonna rate them all in terms of aesthetics, in terms of fit and comfort, in terms of noise cancellation, and in terms of sound quality for music. Now, as you know, I'm a fan of upfront conclusions. So I'm just gonna come out and say that the ones I'll be getting are the Sony WH-MX4s, whatever they're called. If you're on a budget, the Anchor sound cores are actually surprisingly reasonable. And if you don't care about long-term comfort and are happy to spend a bit more money, the Apple AirPods Maxes are the choice for you. So if that's all you wanted from the video, then thank you very much for watching and do please have a great rest of day. But now we're gonna go over these one at a time and I'm gonna share the pros and the cons of each of these six pairs of headphones. And I'll share the results of my personal and our team testing about the various factors so that whichever one of these you're buying, you can make hopefully a slightly more informed decision about the noise canceling headphones that are obviously gonna change your life. So we're gonna start with the cheapest ones and these are the Anchor Soundcore Q30s, which retail for about $100. And if you're on a budget, these are actually a really good option and probably the best value for money that you can get in terms of the noise cancellation headphone wireless headphone market. Their design is a little bit plasticky and flimsy, and they come with this sound core case thing, which again is nothing to write home about. It's got these little cheapy, cheap looking pieces of foam in it as well. But to be honest, for the price, it's not bad at all. In terms of fit and comfort, it's actually pretty reasonable. In terms of looks, these did get the lowest rating from our team members and from me, with most of us rating it either a one or two for an average rating of 1.5 stars in terms of looks. But in terms of fit and comfort, they're actually pretty reasonable. And most of us rated them a four or a three. So this got a rating of 3.5 in terms of fit and comfort. Now, when it comes to noise cancellation, I'm gonna be honest, like, I tested these fairly extensively and I didn't really notice much of a difference between the noise cancelling capabilities of the different headphones. In fairness, we are in this fairly quiet environment. If I was on an aeroplane or on a train or on the London Underground, maybe the noise cancelling test would have been better. But as far as I could really tell, they were all fairly similar in terms of noise cancelling ability. But in terms of sound quality, there were some noticeable differences between the six headphones in the lineup. The sound is pretty good, but I'm not like wowed by it. I'm still getting that kind of like cheap feel. And these ones clocked in fairly reasonably with an average rating of 3.75 stars across our team. The battery life on these is absolutely incredible. It's 40 hours apparently with noise cancelling and 60 hours if you turn off the noise cancelling. And they've got a few buttons on the bottom where you can increase the volume or decrease the volume or hit play and pause. Again, these are nothing to write home about, but if for example you're a student and you're on a budget and you do want a pair of noise cancelling headphones to make it easier to focus when you're working or if you're in a coffee shop or whatever, then these are by far the best value for money. And they also fold down nicely and can go kind of go into this case and you can shove this little piece of plastic in there somewhere if you really want to. But yeah, fairly reasonable option if you are on a budget. Moving up a little bit in terms of price point, we now have the Microsoft Surface Headphones 2, which retail for around about $270. Now in terms of aesthetics, I actually quite like these, especially because they're this sort of silvery, whitey kind of color, and I'm a fan of things that look white broadly. And they have these interesting features in that on both knobs, you can like turn the knobs. So one of the knobs is for volume and the other knob is for the noise cancellation ability of the headphones. Allegedly, they have multi-device support and so they can connect to two devices at once and allegedly it can switch between your iPhone and your MacBook if it recognizes you're getting a phone call. In practice, this feature does not work. Like it has never once actually worked as intended for me. And in terms of battery life, it's fairly low. It's got around about 18 hours of battery life, which means you do have to charge it somewhat regularly if you're gonna be using it extensively for long work sessions. In terms of aesthetics, I gave this a five star rating, but some of the team gave it a three and four star. So the average rating of this was four stars. And in terms of fit and comfort, it's actually very reasonable. It got fives and fours across the board with an average rating of 4.3 stars. But sadly, in terms of sound quality, these are just not as good as some of the alternatives. So I gave this personally a three out of five in terms of sound quality, which was kind of what the team thought as well. So this had an average rating of 3.3 stars in terms of music quality. So I actually used to use these for about six months in 2021, and I really liked them, mostly because of the aesthetic. They were quite nice. To be honest, I hadn't A-B tested them with a bunch of different headphones. To be honest, all these review videos are somewhat artificial because once you have one of these headphones, it doesn't really matter which one you have you kind of then just get used to it and that becomes the new normal. It's only when you really compare them side by side with like kind of six other headphones that you start to quibble about things like noise quality. But broadly, I was a big fan of them um, when I had them and I like the fact that they came with this nice little case. 
which meant I could just chuck it in my bag and the case had a nice little slot for the cables as well. Then sadly, my Tesla got broken into and these got stolen. So this is just a pair that we ordered for review purposes. But after testing them side by side with all the others, I've decided that I'm no longer gonna be using the Microsoft Surface headphones too because the Sonys are just a little bit better than them across all fronts except the aesthetics. Anyway, that brings us on to the Sony what are they called? The Sony WH-1000XM4s. This is the only real problem with these is that it's impossible to remember what the name is. Sony really needs to come up with a better way of naming these headphones, but they are the ones that I'm gonna be now switching to because I think they're the perfect mix of comfort and sound quality and noise cancellation and battery life, even if the aesthetic is just slightly less nice than the Microsoft Surface headphones too. Now, in terms of fit and comfort, these actually were the best headphones that we tested. They were the most comfortable by a reasonable margin. Decent, very comfortable most comfortable yet. And I think the main reason for that is that these are just so light. They are, I think, probably the lightest out of the six headphones that we tested, although I haven't measured it, just on my head, they feel really light. And when it comes to wearing these for extended periods of time, really the comfort correlates strongly with how heavy the headphones are, or rather how light the headphones are. Because the main problem with the AirPods Max, for example, like they're amazing in sound quality, they're amazing in battery life, they're amazing across all fronts. It's just that they're really heavy. And after like an hour of using them, my head starts to hurt from having such heavy headphones on it. And so the fact that the Sonys are so comfortable to wear for very extended periods of time, I think it's mostly down to just how light they are. In terms of looks, yeah, they're not bad. The team thought they were five stars and four stars in terms of looks. I'd personally rate them a three star because I do prefer the look of the Microsoft Surface headphones, but I mean, they're very reasonable. They look like just a normal pair of noise canceling headphones, nothing to write home about. And in terms of design, they fold up nicely like this. So it's very easy to pack into a bag. And they also come with this little carry case that if you want, you can put them in. I'm probably not gonna do that because that's too much faff. I'm just probably gonna stick them in my bag exactly like that. They charge like all these do via USB-C. That's pretty standard. And unsurprisingly, they've got a power button and a button that lets you control the level of noise cancellation. In terms of battery life, these are actually really good. They're advertised as having 30 hours of battery life with noise cancellation and 38 hours without noise cancellation if you're not into noise cancellation for whatever reason. And in terms of sound quality for listening to music, I personally thought these were really good. I gave them a four star rating. Sadly, this was not mirrored by our team who thought they were more like two stars and three stars in terms of noise quality. And so the overall rating for this in terms of sound quality is 3.5 stars. But personally, I think that's a little bit of an under estimate of what the actual, I say actual, my, my personal subjective interpretation of their, their music quality was. And to be honest, this sort of subjectiveness you get a lot when it comes to testing headphones. Like I'm not an audiophile, no one in our team is really an audiophile, and so we don't objectively know what these headphones sound like. All we can say is what our subjective experience of like, oh, this sounds a bit better than that. And after doing a bunch of hot swapping to be like, are these really sounding better than the Surface? Are these really sounding better than the Boses? I kind of decided at the end that like, yeah, whenever I put these on my head, I felt, oh, these are so comfortable. And I also felt that, oh, the sound quality on these is pretty good. Again, not as good as the AirPods Max. AirPods Max Max wins across the board, just blew everyone else out, out of the water in terms of sound quality. But I don't think that trade-off is warranted given how heavy they are and therefore how uncomfortable they are for long periods of time, at least for me. And so these Sonys are the ones that I'm gonna be holding on to. I haven't figured out whether I want them in white or silver or in blue. I'm not too much of a fan of this matte black color, but hey, they're really good. And these are now gonna be a staple part of my everyday carry. All right, now we're spending a little bit more money and we come to the Bose QC700s, which retail for $350. So these are a little bit more expensive than the Sonys. And actually, I think the main selling point is the look. It does look quite nice. Um, our team was a bit uh, split on whether we liked this particular style with these like, yeah, it's just a slightly different design to most noise canceling headphones. I personally quite like them, but in terms of comfort, they're not quite as good as the Sony's. And in terms of sound quality, for me also, they're not quite as good as the Sony's. Our team rated these pretty poorly across the board. So this got an average of 3.25 stars when it came to fit and comfort. It got a three stars in terms of noise cancellation, and it got a 3.1 stars in terms of sound quality and a 3.2 stars in terms of looks. So like broadly, if we average the four, four, five, four, four team members that we had testing these. Broadly, we weren't a fan. These are actually the ones I've been using for the last six months since my Tesla got broken into and I lost my Microsoft Surface headphones too. I've actually been using these, but I'm gonna give them away to a friend and instead replace them with the Sonys because the Sonys are marginally better in terms of comfort and in terms of sound quality. Next, we come to the Apple AirPod Maxes, which are really expensive and retail for around about $640. At least if you convert the pounds, we'll put the actual dollar price over here. Now, these come with a case, but we have two team members, Gordon and Angus in our studio who use these and they never carry the case with them. Similarly, when I used to use the Apple AirPods Max, I never carried the case because the case is totally pointless. And genuinely, these are really good. Their sound quality is just way better than all of the other headphones that we tested. 
good. And when you put these on, you immediately think, oh my God, this sounds incredible compared to the other noise cancelling headphones. And in a way, it kind of screws up your mind a bit, or your ear rather, because it makes you think that the others sound bad in comparison to this. But then after a while of getting used to the others, you stop, you, you kind of forget what it was like to wear the Apple AirPods Max. This is probably the best sounding of them all. The sound is amazing. The design is a bit polarizing. I quite like the blue color personally, rather than the black. And they've got this little mesh thing at the top, which is kind of comfortable. But the main thing, the main drawback of these, as I've said, is that they're just too heavy. They're very comfortable for short amounts of time, but for more than about half an hour, I started to find my kind of ears getting a bit tired, my head getting a bit tired. Maybe I'm not hench enough to handle these, but I just, I just really wasn't a fan in terms of long-term comfort levels. Now, if you have Apple devices, these are actually really good because there is a chip or something inside them that makes them pair with iPhones and Macs really easily. So you can literally just wear them and they will automatically pair to your iPhone or to your Mac. And weirdly, that means that there isn't actually a way of turning them off. The way they go into standby mode is when you put them in the case, but given that realistically, no one really carries the case around because it's kind of useless, it does have that slight quirk to them. It's got a little button at the top, which acts as a little sort of volume dial. And also if you press the button down, you can access Siri. But the issue is that these are the only phones that don't have a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack. So if you listen to stuff on airplanes a lot and you want to plug your headphones into the airplane system thingy so that you can watch a movie on the airplane using your fancy noise cancelling headphones, you can do that with all the others, but you can't do it with the Apple AirPods Max. This is not a huge problem. Like, to be honest, these were the clear winners in most of the categories in terms of comfort. So yeah, great pair of headphones, super expensive, but you do get fantastic sound quality for that, but they are not for me because I just can't handle them in terms of the heaviness and the discomfort. And finally, we come to the big daddies, the B&O Bioplay H95s, which are ridiculously expensive. These come in at $940 or thereabouts. And they have, a, they have these like leather thingies around them. I think you can actually take these off. Yeah, you can take them off. They have leather around them. They have this leather thing at the top. So it's like a more premium, higher end feel to these noise canceling headphones. But sadly, they are just not very good. In terms of the aesthetics, our team was a bit split on them. I quite like these metal bits and I would have even liked the Nordic ice color because these come in a multitude of colors and that color looks really cool. But again, they run into, into the same issue that the AirPods Max do in that they are quite heavy. And so wearing them for extended periods of time can actually get a little bit uncomfortable. Sound quality as well, again, it's reasonable. Most of our team rated them some, somewhere between three and four stars. It's, I would just thought that the sound would be better for this price. So the sound quality doesn't feel amazing. I thought these were a three star personally. I did personally prefer the sound quality of the Sonys, despite the fact that these are like triple the price. But I guess what you're really paying for here is the sort of more premium leather feel of the noise canceling headphones. And to be honest, I liked the Nordic ice color, at least on the website so much that if these were slightly lighter, I probably would have gone for these just to have the flex of like having a really nicely aesthetic pair of headphones. Sadly, they're not comfortable enough to even warrant that. So basically I'm not a fan of these despite them being quite expensive and quite high end. Oh, the other cool thing about them is that they do come in this fancy like metal case thing, which feels feels very high end, feels very premium, makes you think, feel, feel, oh, sick but it's also a case that's quite heavy by itself. And so it's not a case that you're really gonna be carrying in a backpack. It's more for the kind of aesthetics of the unboxing experience. And so that you can feel, oh, I'm a legend because I wear Bang & Olufsen noise canceling headphones. Now in terms of practical uses of these noise canceling headphones, there's three main domains that have made up the bulk of my use of these over the last few years. Firstly, it's listening to my study with me playlist on Spotify while I'm trying to work or focus or do any kind of deep work at all. Second, it's consuming things like music and podcast and audiobooks while I'm on things like trains and airplanes because the noise canceling is really helpful. And thirdly, I find these noise canceling headphones really helpful if I'm editing videos because then with the noise canceling, I can edit videos wherever I go. And speaking of editing videos, another tool that I find incredibly helpful is called Storyblocks, who are very kindly sponsoring this video. I've been using Storyblocks since I started this YouTube channel five years ago in 2017. Storyblocks is absolutely fantastic. It is a subscription service that gives you royalty-free stock photos and stock videos and stock music that you can use in YouTube videos just like this one. In fact, when we got team members to test out the headphones, some of the tracks we were using were from Storyblocks royalty-free so that we can include them in this video without getting copyrights stricken for them. Me and our editors personally find Storyblocks super helpful when we're trying to find B-roll. And especially in the early days of this YouTube channel, when I was trying to juggle making videos with the demands of being a medical student and later the demands of being a doctor, it was super helpful to have this library of high quality stock footage available to use as B-roll so that I didn't necessarily have to go out and spend hours and hours shooting my own B-roll for all the videos that I was making. And other than just videos and music, Storyblocks also has things like After Effects templates and Premiere Pro templates for titles, lower thirds, transitions, and even sound effects that you can incorporate into your videos whenever you want. Storyblocks has subscriptions for any budget. And so if you wanna check it out, then do hit the link in the video description. So thank you so much Storyblocks for sponsoring this video and for helping out the channel over the last five years. So overall, when it comes to these headphones, the budget pick is the Anchor Sound Cores, which are very reasonable. My personal pick is the Sony WH-MX-1000 XM4s, whatever they're called. 
And if you don't care about the comfort thing, the AirPods Maxes are by far the best ones in terms of sound quality. Now, if you like this video, you might be interested in what sort of podcasts I listen to with my fancy pair of noise cancelling headphones. And that'll be in a video over there called 20 Podcasts That Made Me a Millionaire. So thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.